Ah, aviation. We love it for so many different reasons. Maybe it is because of the fantastic machines that are capable of lifting tens of tons of either cargo or passengers and travel them all over the globe, effectively making the world a smaller place. Or maybe it is because of the views that we see from the cockpit or from a passenger window where we can look down on the world, on mountain ranges, on lakes, and get a hint of the curvature of the Earth and just realize that we're part of something much, much bigger than ourselves. Or maybe it's the teamwork. The fact that we work together with fantastic other people within the entire aviation industry and where every one of us needs to be absolutely on top every single day in order for the industry to be as effective and as safe as it is. No matter what the reason for you loving aviation is, I'm betting that you right now find yourself in need for a little bit of guidance and a little bit of pep talk. So that's what I'm going to give you on this video, guys. As always, you are welcome to the Mentor Pilot channel and I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Stay tuned. On the video today, guys, I am going to give you advice in four different areas. And the whole point I have with this video is to try to give you a little bit of guidance, a little bit of motivation on how to navigate this dark time that we find ourselves in. This is made primarily for people who are maybe finishing off their uh, aviation training or find themselves outside of a job, but it can be applied to anyone in the entire world, no matter what industry that you're in. So, the first thing that I want to talk about, guys, is what to do right now, now, today, when you're finished watching this video. If you ask a pilot what he or she will do if they find themselves in an unexpected, potentially dangerous situation while they're flying the aircraft, the first thing that they will always say that they're going to do is fly the aircraft, okay? It doesn't matter how many bells and whistles are going on, it doesn't matter how many alarms they see, how many lights are coming, or how much the aircraft is vibrating. The first thing that the pilot flying always have to do is make sure that the aircraft is on a safe speed, safe attitude, flying away from terrain and keeping itself safe. Without that happening, nothing else can be done. You find yourself in exactly that situation right now. So, what you need to do with your life right now is you need to sit down and you need to look at how you are going to fly your aircraft, which is your life. So that might be looking over your financial situation, for example. If you've just finished your flight training and maybe you have borrowed a lot of money to finance that flight training, well, in that case, you need to look at how you are going to stay afloat financially. That might be by immediately contacting your bank, explaining to them what the situation is. Believe me, there's a lot of people that find themselves in difficult circumstances right now. And see, maybe you can get some kind of repayment holiday or extend the, the, uh, the time of repayment of the loan or something like that. Contact the bank, see what they can do. On the other side of it is reducing whatever costs that you have. So look over your economy, make yourself a good budget, see what things that you can cut away and cut those away. Do them as quickly as possible. And then you need to look at how can you get an income. Okay. I realize that right now, as it feels like the earth is crumbling, you might think that there are no jobs, but there are jobs out there. They might not be the jobs that you would like to do, but there will be jobs out there guides. So look, at it. it might be anything. I have friends right now who are still employed as pilot, but one of them are starting to take his trucker license because he knows that there is a possibility that he might lose his job as a pilot. In that case, if he has his trucker license, then he can look into getting a job as a trucker, not get paid as much, but at least he can pay for his family. Another one started a company. Um, he is out now because the, the um, airline he's working for is grounded. He cannot work. So he started up a company where he goes and contract out his time to dig pools for other people and pave roads and do everything it takes in order to get money in. What this shows is a world that I think that you've heard before, which is resilience. You look at what can I do? Do I like it? No. Doesn't matter. Does it take income? Yes. So it's a way out. Okay. 
This is what you need to do now as well. Maybe you have a previous job that you came from that you left in order to pursue your dream. Maybe you can contact them and see that you can get that job back for a while. Or maybe you can do one of those things. It doesn't really matter. The important thing here is that you need to safeguard your income and your economy. This is flying the aircraft, fly your life. Step number two is really, really important, especially if you are just out of flight training or if indeed if you've lost your job. And that is you need to stay sharp, right? You need to keep your knowledge and your skills sharp because you don't know uh, when you are going to be called in for your next job interview. You don't know if it's going to happen next week, next month, in, in one year or maybe two years. So Knowledge and skills is something that will disappear unless you keep them sharp. So it's up to you now to do some kind of plan for how that's going to happen. That might mean that you contact other people that came from your school. They might, there is going to be people in exactly the same situation like you that you can put together maybe a study group with. So that every month you study a different subject and you have mock exams with each other or things like that. That's a possibility. You can do things like, well, take up courses, go to seminars in these subjects that you're trying to keep sharp. If it's not in aviation, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's accounting. It can be anything. But you need to take the initiative to keep your skills sharp. And you can also use this time, if you find yourself on the ground now without anything to do, to acquire new skills. Improve your skill set. Make yourself more attractive on the job market so that when the time comes, you will stand up a little bit more than anyone else. So maybe you feel that your English level, for example, could improve. English level and communication is something that's gonna be extremely important when you want to get that first aviation job. Uh, and if you feel that you want to improve that, but then maybe, you know, take up an English course. This is one of the reasons why we in the Airline Pilot Club have created a dedicated English course. We know that there's a lot of people who find themselves in this situation. So if you go into the, the airlinepilotclub.com and you can look at courses and in there you will find an English language course with a dedicated, very skilled English language professor who is doing an English course which is aviation related. All right? Another thing that you definitely should be doing right now is you should contact the ATO, the flight school that you did your training with or where you did your MCC course and you should see what kind of help that they can provide to you. You can be absolutely sure that they have been thinking about this and most of them are going to have your best interest in mind. So something that we've been saying in the Airline Pilot Club is that in order for you to keep your multi-crew skills going, you need to get into sim and work a little bit in a multi-crew environment at least every two months. So contact your flight school, suggest that, say that you can take a, a, a night session, it doesn't matter. You, together with someone else who's in your situation, get into sim, hopefully there might be an instructor that can be there and do it. Otherwise, I'm, I'm sure that they can figure something out. And you can do a little bit of flying together, working a little bit with non-normal checklists, doing some non-precision approaches, just to keep yourself both skilled and motivated. Because remember, anytime, even if it's just for half an hour or an hour, that is going to wake up that part of the brain that you have been training in order to keep that good. All right, very, very important. Step number three, guys, you need to stay motivated. So the reason I'm saying that is because it is very, very easy to find yourself in a situation where you think that it's all bad news out there and you lose that kind of flame, the thing that you got. Remember that feeling you got when you watched the, the first part of this video and you saw those aircraft taking off and you thought, I would do anything to be sitting in the cockpit in one of those aircraft. Well, you need to keep that motivation going. And that can be done by engaging in conversation with other aviators, for example. Like, you know, talk to your old classmates. Or this is one of the reasons why I created the um, Mentor Aviation app. So that you can go in and you can talk in the forums or in the chat or with me 
um, follow live streams, follow YouTube channels, follow whatever it is that makes you remember why you love this occupation, why you love aviation. Make sure that you do that because without motivation, it's going to be really hard to do step two, which is to keep yourself sharp. And if you lose your motivation and you stop reading up on your ATPL subjects or your um, MCC course, whatever it might be, then when that precious day comes and they ask you to come for an interview, you might not have what it takes anymore. So keep yourself motivated. It's extremely important. Step four, guys positive attitude. A positive attitude is not as easy as it sounds, right? Right now, um, for the next couple of months, you're going to be bombarded with negative news and stuff saying that this is not going to work and this is looking bad and this is happening. Now, you, it is up to you how you perceive these things, how you choose to work through this coming slump, all right? No one is going to feel sorry for you. Okay, if you start feeling sorry for yourself, the only thing that will happen is that your performance will deteriorate, your ability to come up with unique solutions for how to solve your situation is going to deteriorate. And you know how it is. When you feel that everything is against you, the only thing that ends up happening is you sit in the sofa doing nothing. But if you are positive, if you start using that amazing brain of yours for looking into unique solutions to the situation, like for example, you know, contacting flight clubs out there, maybe they need someone to pull their gliders or to fly parachuting missions or do fire surveillance during the summer or fly bush flights, something that you might not have thought about but can still keep you motivated and be something that you do inside of aviation, you should be doing that and you should be looking at this slump as a possibility to improve yourself, okay? Um, it's likely that you're going to have to work with something that you didn't choose to work with. Hey, doesn't matter. It's going to add life experience to you. Because remember, at some point in the future, it might be in two weeks, it might be in two years, you are going to be sitting across from someone like me who is going to be, you know, doing a job interview with you for your potential dream job. And one of the first things that I'm going to be asking is, I see that you did your training two years ago. What did you do during these two years? And if you then, you know, straighten out your back and you tell me, listen, this is what I did. I went and I took whatever job I could find. I was working out in the forest. I was picking mushrooms. I was doing whatever it took in order to get money in. At the same time, I had started a little study club together with my previous flight school. And I was going into the simulator during the night in order to keep my multi-crew skills sharp. And I was reading up my ATPL subject and keeping myself motivated. I've been talking to other aviators, looking for jobs. I am going to be so impressed. And what it will show to me is that I'm sitting across from a person who has true resilience. Someone that if he or she is able to deal with, you know, a slump like that, he or she is also able to take care of herself or himself inside of, an, of a flight deck. So I'm going to be really impressed and it's much more likely that I am going to look at you favorably, no matter what industry it is that you're in than if you say that you've been doing nothing, that you're doing the bare minimum to survive. You need to look at obstacles as stepping stones to get yourself higher, not as mountains that you cannot climb. This is really, really important, guys. Okay? There are, it is very hard. I know that, you know? It's, and I'm not telling you that this is going to be easy. I am not sitting here bullshitting you, saying that, you know, you are going to be able to find a job, no problem. No, this is going to be hard. It is, we are going through one of the worst crises that have ever existed in the aviation industry since the Wright brothers. So I can't sit here and say that everything is going to be okay. But what I do know is that humanity, we are resilient. We love traveling. And at some point, this industry is going to come back in one way or another. It might look different from what you're used to. It might be a slightly different ball game than what you thought you signed up for. But in any case, providing that you follow these four rules, that you stay positive, motivated, that you fly the aircraft, which is your life, and that you keep your skills sharp, you are going to be first in line to get that job when this is all over. And you can start 
into this fantastic business flying those jets that I know that every single one of you who was watching this in this episode is interested in doing. That's what I had for this episode, guys. The only reason I am doing this is because I know that I might fight myself in this situation myself and I am going to apply these four rules to myself. And I hope that you, by listening to this, can get a little bit of that flame going and get starting to work on getting your future sorted. I want you to consider to um, subscribe to the channel, put the notification bell on if you like this kind of content. And also I want to send a huge thank you to my Patreon crew, right? It is because I have my Patreons that I am able to do these kind of videos because I know that this video is not going to reach a huge market. It's just going to reach a few people who really need to watch it. But because I have my Patreons who are providing a little bit of economic stability to the channel and previewing my videos, I can do these things and I can do a little bit more quirky special videos. So a huge thank you to my Patreon. You guys are absolutely fantastic. You know who you are. And if you who are sitting here watching it wants to support the channel and want to join my Patreon crew, well then there is a link either I see up here or in the description of the video that you can click and you can choose to donate as little or as much as you want. Everything is appreciated. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.